Hey guys, welcome back to Nifty Invest. In today's financial landscape, it's imperative to be well-informed and prepared for the market's ever-changing dynamics. Financial expert Lynette Tsang, known for her insightful analysis, recently delved into the world of long-term bonds and their surprising volatility. In this video, we will provide a Lynette Zhang's analysis, covering critical points and insights she shared. By the end of this video, you'll have a better understanding of the risks and opportunities associated with long-term bonds. Lynette Zhang begins by emphasizing the significance of long-term bonds in our financial lives. Whether you're using them as a tool of barter or saving for future goals like education or retirement, it's vital to comprehend the impact of inflation on the value of these bonds. She highlights that inflation erodes purchasing power, making it a critical factor to consider when investing in long-term bonds. Lynette delves into recent events that have rattled the bond market. She discusses the sudden spike in the 30-year Treasury yield, which surged by 16 basis points. While this may not seem substantial in a market expected to be stable, it's a noteworthy development. This increased volatility occurred following an inflation report and a weak bond auction. Contrary to claims that inflation has been tamed, Lynette insists it's far from over, urging investors to remain vigilant. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoy the content we do here on this channel. Let's get right into the video. Long-term bonds are seen more volatile than stocks. Let's take a look at this because this is the 20-year Treasury bond ETF. Three months, 100% moneyness implied volatility. I mean, seriously, what you're looking at is the foundation of this that you're working for and you're using as your tool of barter and you may even be attempting to save it for something in the future. Maybe an education, mm, maybe retirement, maybe something else. Why? Because you're losing all purchasing power. That's what this inflation shows you. The volatility was on full display. That was last week, following a hot inflation report and a weak bond auction. The 30-year Treasury yield jumped 16 basis points. That may not seem like a lot, but that's huge in what is supposed to be very stable, right? The most since the market turmoil at the onset of the pandemic in March of 2020. But Paul Krugman says inflation has been tamed. It's all over, folks. It ain't over, folks. You still have a minute to get in place. You sitting in this stuff? You sitting in the stock market, the bond market? Good luck to you. As my mother would say, good luck to you. Because you are not going to fare well. Beware the new treasury buyers. Because risk must be transferred. The old treasury buyers were more stable. They were... They were central bank chiefs. They were governments because the U.S. dollar as the world reserve currency, they had to hold dollar and denom dollar denominated back, um, assets in their reserves. Okay, but they're going away. Even our Federal Reserve, I mean, they may turn around and have to buy it again, but more price sensitive investors like hedge funds are piling in. Well, you say, well, why, why do I care, you know, really about the hedge funds? And oh, by the way, weren't the hedge funds the ones that got bailed out from Silicon Valley Bank and those other regional banks? But don't call it a bailout. They just weren't ready yet for you to notice that, that banks are going to be bailed in. You will lose whatever wealth you hold in that system. You will lose it even if they don't because it will lose all purchasing power. Take your, you know, choose your medicine. That's why I choose physical gold, physical silver in my possession and why I believe you should too. Because there is a shifting demand as they shift the risk from the few to the many, which is just the right size to fail. And you, my friend, are in the many. So who's buying less? Okay, the Federal Reserve, foreign investors, commercial banks, and broker dealers. You can see that. The Fed sold off $213 billion in the treasuries by the end of 2023. If they continue on the path they're on, they will have sold off $720 billion. So they ain't buying. 
In this section, Wynette explores the shifting landscape of bond buyers. She notes that the old treasury buyers, like central banks and governments, are fading away. Even the Federal Reserve is reducing its bond holdings. Meanwhile, more price-sensitive investors, such as hedge funds, are entering the market. Wynette raises questions about the implications of this shift and the potential consequences for those who continue to hold bonds. Wynette emphasizes the importance of understanding risk transfer in the bond market. She highlights that the risk is moving from a few stable entities to a broader range of investors. With central banks and governments reducing their holdings, the burden is shifting to riskier assets. This situation raises concerns for the stability of the bond market, and Lynette underscores the significance of this shift. This part of Lynette's analysis sheds light on the current bond buyers. Pension funds and insurance companies have become net buyers, indicating their confidence in long-term bonds. Mutual funds and money market funds are also showing increased interest in bonds. The significant shift in the profile of bond buyers and sellers reveals an evolving market landscape. Foreign investors went from a positive, a plus, of 376 down to 275 billion. Commercial banks were also selling. So foreigners were buying, but commercial banks, that means JP Morgan, Bank of America, Wells Fargo, those are all commercial banks with ties directly to the Federal Reserve. And by the way, all those regional banks and community banks are depending upon these commercial banks, as are, uh, you know, the anybody that performs that, that function. So minus 83 billion to minus 170 billion. So more than double. And broker dealers, so these are supposed to be the market makers. All these entities are supposed to stabilize that price, which they aren't doing anyway and haven't been doing, especially since 2008 and especially since 2013. They went from buying 72 billion to a big whopping goose egg. Not a dime, not a dime. So who's buying? Let's take a look at this. Oh my goodness pension funds and insurance companies where they were selling minus 41 billion, they're now buying 150 billion. So these are the institutional investors that are investing your hard earned money. Do you see this risk transfer? Who else is buying? Okay, mutual funds from 20 billion to 275 billion. You can't make this stuff up. And money market funds. So we've had a flood of people rushing into money market funds because they're paying you a little bit of interest. And that's going from minus where they were selling 751 billion to a plus 600 billion. Kind of looks like the money markets are buying all of the treasuries that the Fed is selling. Isn't that interesting? Hmm. Hmm. Isn't that interesting? Do you see this risk transfer? Do you see it? I hope you do. Because if you only share one chart or one slide, you got to share this one with your friends and your neighbors. If you need to print it out, Ask your consultant at ITM, they'll print it out. If you don't wanna do that, go on the blog. You can pause it, you can print it out. Ignorance does not make you immune. It simply leaves you vulnerable. And they have been transferring the risk from the few to the many, and this is the final blow off. Lynette warns of the importance of understanding counterparty risk. She contrasts physical assets like gold and silver with other financial assets that involve counterparty risk. She quotes the Bank for International Settlements in highlighting that gold is the only financial asset that runs no counterparty risk. This segment serves as a stark reminder of the vulnerability associated with traditional financial assets. In this part of her analysis, Lynette addresses the commonly held belief that debt and deficits don't matter. She references Ray Dolio and other economists to argue that they indeed matter. The Treasury is running substantial deficits, and Lynette points out that interest rates are on the rise. She raises concerns about the sustainability of this trend and its implications for the economy and the bond market. The video concludes with Lynette Zhang's impassioned plea to her audience. 
She emphasizes that her fervor stems from her desire to warn and inform people about the evolving financial landscape. She urges viewers to be prepared and take action to protect their wealth in the face of changing market dynamics. We, the treasury market is completely de-anchored. All of the, wait, I'm going back to here. All of the usual buyers that really aren't sensitive to prices, the central banks, in foreign investors, commercial banks, broker dealers, they're going away. And you have pension funds and insurance companies, but it's guaranteed. Well, look on your documentation because those guarantees are only as good as the claims paying ability. That's it. That's counterparty risk, people. That's counterparty risk. What runs no counterparty risk? Physical gold, physical silver in your possession. And that's according, that's according to me. But more importantly, that is according to the most powerful bank in the entire world, the Bank for International Settlements. This gold is the only, the only financial asset that runs no counterparty risk. All this other garbage that they want you to think you're diversified in, it's all counterparty risk and you're looking right at it. What's counterparty risk? That's counterparty risk. The claims paying ability. And have we not been witness over this last year or so to funds going, nope, you can't have your money back. Nope. If you don't hold it, you don't own it. And your perception means zero in a court of law, zero. And it's getting worse, higher or longer. U.S. government bonds are mired in a three-year slump as volatility rises. That's not good. We talked about the bond vigilantes. Who are the bond vigilantes? Because that's the way they say it. The bond vigilantes are demanding to be paid more to take the risk. Yeah, those are bond traders. And you saw when they significantly came into the market in 2013. So you got them getting out while you are getting in. Uh, yeah, that's going to work out real well. What do you think? We have an abnormal supply demand situation in that the quantity of debt the government has to sell is a lot and will remain a lot. Oh, but don't worry. Debt, debts and deficits, uh, they don't matter. Pfft. Yeah, they matter. And that's according to Ray Dalio, but that's also according to me. And that's according to every economist on the planet. The Treasury is running huge deficits. And we were told so long that it doesn't matter. Guess what? It matters because you've got this interest rates. Look at this. Okay. Is that what you want your foundation to look like? Not what I want my foundation to look like. I want it to look like this. I hold it and I own it along with food, water, energy, security, barter ability, wealth preservation, community and shelter. And, and look, I know that I'm really keyed up and, and likely some of the recent videos I've done, you can see how keyed up I am, but that's because I'm trying to warn you. And I hope you're hearing me. I really hope you're hearing me.